Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you for this time that we come to pause around in your presence, Lord God. All I can hear is Holy Spirit move. Holy Spirit just move in our lives right now, Lord God. Forgive us for any sin, seen and unseen, known and unknownly, Lord God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord God. I just thank you, Lord God, for your spirit that comes to help us, to comfort us, Lord God. Holy Spirit, move. And I just ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Um, as I was listening to uh, Pastor Wiles uh, praying, I could just hear Holy Spirit move. Holy Spirit lead. Holy Spirit guide us. And um, that's the message on the day where I'm just going to talk, you know, a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Because um, this week has been, um, it's been, a, it's been a challenging week. It's been a lot of um, stuff going on. And uh, Pastor Wiles had asked me to, um, you know, um, bring a word on a Friday. And this is one of those weeks where it's like, I got nothing. I literally had nothing until, you know, today. And the thing, and um, God had reminded me about my Holy Spirit. Instead of you going through, you know, all your notes and stuff like that, allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Um, this, uh, was it, two, yeah, this past Tuesday, no, Monday, I was on the way to the, um, to the uh, Chevy dealership because my truck has been acting up. And um, I arranged to have like the injectors clean. And on my way there, the um, the GPS, even though I kind of know the way to get there, the GPS kept on falling dead. It kept on saying signal was lost. Try again. Signal was lost. And I started to panic. And I was like, wait a second. I'm not going to be able to know exactly where I'm going because the GPS is is key. It, the, you know, the physical GPS on the phone keep on dying. And there's traffic everywhere. And I started to panic. And the Holy Spirit, literally, I just felt this calmness come over to me. The Holy Spirit said, go back to your instincts. Remember what I taught you. Remember the direction that I gave you before. Before there was a physical GPS, I gave you, you know, um, something in your heart to learn how to read direction. Know exactly where to go. So I gave you this, and so stop relying on that. And so next thing you know, I, I said, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going I'm to calm down, and you just lead and guide me to that way. Next thing you know, he was, I was going up, you know, um, I was going up 20, then, you know, I saw all the traffic, and then I was like, well, maybe I can go this way because it seems like it's a shortcut. And the Holy Spirit was like, no, if you stay right here, even though it might seem like it's a shortcut, you're going to run into some trap. So I was like, OK, OK, Holy Spirit. And I end up going this way, even though it seemed a little longer. I end up getting there faster because by the time the GPS decided to want to kick back in that area that I was going to go was red. <laughs> it was red. So that means I was going to run into a lot of traffic. And, and I just, you know, just keep thinking about like, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, to, to lead you into all truth. Like, here's a question. Who is the Holy Spirit to you? Who is the Holy Spirit? I'm going to leave the floor open for, um, you know, for Q&A right now. Who is the Holy Spirit?
And I looked at Ripley and the man, and he's getting upset. And I and I watched the car the tail end got hit. But that would have been me if I would have if I would have kept going. I just stopped, and he the man I'm flying through the light. You know, I just really thank. That's why I said hallelujah. You know, I just thank God for the things that God has kept me from. The Holy Spirit has kept me from. You know, and as fast as he was going, that, that would have he probably hit me right there in the seat on me. And that could have been the end of my life, you know. That could have been, you know, could have been me right there. And I, for me, the Holy Spirit is a guide. He's my a, a comforter. Keeps me patient. You know, but I want to say things. When people upset me in a store, you know, I find myself going on the highway. And, and, and I, my heart gets there. People cut me off on purpose. And my heart gets to racing, you know. And, and, and the first thing I want to do is pull beside them and look at them. And you, you just, I want them to know you just cut me off. I want you to know, and, and, and the Holy Spirit, keep your head straight. You never know what's on your mind. Keep, you know, that, that's the Holy Spirit been working with me a whole lot. Keep your head straight. I want to, I want to let you know when you cut me off. I want to hit my horn and let you know that you did wrong. You know, and and for and it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, somebody cut you off, and you know how you do your child. You want to let them know that they messed up. Don't do it again. That's mm-hmm. that's how I find myself sometimes on the highway. I want to let people know you messed up. Don't, you don't just cut people off like that. And I would I be one to get on my horn and, and let them know and point my finger and tell them don't do that again. You know. But the Holy Spirit has been keeping me. Keep your head down. Keep your head straight. They know what they did wrong. You just I will correct them. You keep going straight. And sometimes we find ourselves wanting to do that with a lot of. Uh, even our children, I'm going to go to our children. Sometimes we find ourselves, you know, one of parent. If we got uh, grown children and we want to treat them the same way, we want to parent them, you know. And the Holy Spirit would be like, no, don't, don't say that. They're not, they're, 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 they're adults now. You got to say things differently. You can't just go in there and fuss at them like you want to. You can't go in there and, and get on to them like you used to. You got to say, you got to just sit there and listen. Give them the scripture. You know, the Holy Spirit, a lot of times in my children, I'll be one that. Uh, you know you shouldn't be. You, you know I want to be wanting to parent them because all my kids are they're adults now. I'll be wanting to still get on to them like they're kids. Sometimes I'll be wanting to pull a bread out and spank them because they're making dumb decisions. But you know we got to listen to the Holy Spirit. Be be quiet. Don't say anything right now. Just go in and pray for them, or just don't don't say anything right now. Go in and go in and fast for them. So the Holy Spirit. I mean it, it, it's it's my road now. The Holy Spirit. He 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 guides me and. and on everything like this daily decision w- w- without the holy spirit i'll be back at, out in the world you know the holy spirit is, is everything i'm not gonna hold the floor on get somebody else a chance but he, he's everything to me yeah anybody else um who is the holy spirit to you you know i uh you know it's something that uh you know, we're talking about this, you know, it's something that, that, uh, that me and my wife even been talking about even here lately. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is, uh, he's a gentleman. He's, uh, he's the one that will lead you. He will guide you, you know, and, uh, I was listening to, uh, Pastor Wiles, he was uh, even giving his testimony, you know, and it's something, you know, me and my wife, we was uh, at the gas station the other night. I don't know if it was last night or a couple nights ago. And uh, I was looking to see which pump I wanted to go and pump my gas. Just something just as simple as which pump I wanted to go to. And I said, well, I really don't want to go to this pump that was right here. It was open. And I said, well, I want to go. I thought to myself, I want to go to the next pump over. But I felt even in my spirit, you need to go to that pump. But even as I was going in the parking lot, it was a vehicle that was already parked, if I'm not mistaken. And they pulled out. And even as they pulled out, they was in front of me and they were just taking their time and they was taking their time waiting for them to go on so I can, you know, uh, 
you know, get to where I need to get to. And all of a sudden, they just stop. They put in reverse and slammed on the gas. And I whipped it right into that where God was directing me to go to. And I was sitting there thinking if I would have just kept on going to where I wanted to go, mm-hmm. that car would have hit us head on at full speed. I mean, he just, the dude just smashed on the gas. And I'm sitting here like, and he going there in reverse. And then he whip into a, uh, whip into a stall. And I'm sitting there thinking, what in the world is going on? And, you know, it's something you, it's something that, you know, we got to be sensitive to hear the voice of God, mm-hmm. the voice of the Holy Spirit when he began to speak to us. And, you know, let's to Junior, uh, Pastor Wiley was talking about, you know, I want to look over this way and that way. And so bad, I really mm-hmm. want to go over there and have a talk with the guy. Mm-hmm. And if somebody else is in their passenger seat, and I looked over, you know, and I kept, you know, I, I didn't go over. I, I kept my cool and I didn't stare. Just, you know, I want to see who was that getting out the car. And I just turned and I turned my head back and I went on and pumped my gas. And so bad, you know, you know, it's something about that flesh. That flesh began to rise and want you to act out of character. That flesh want to rise and want you to, hey, man, did you know I was behind you? Your flesh will make you want to do things that the Holy Spirit is saying, just stay cool. Mm-hmm. Just stay cool, stay focused. Because we don't realize uh, how these spirits begin to operate. You know, when people are in their flesh and you have people with different spirits and you have people that are demon possessed, they are looking to take you out. Mm-hmm. But one thing when we have the power of the Holy Spirit down on the inside of us and begin to speak to us. And that's why we got to crucify our flesh daily. You know, that's why we can't let our flesh begin to rise. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And, and, and it's so important to just listen to God. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to you. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Uh, you never know what people are dealing with today. Because so many people are, they, they, they are, they are suicidal. Some people are, are angry. Some people are, they are sick in their mind. They're going through different things. And a lot of times we don't know what people are dealing with. And that's why we got to be prayerful and, 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 and pray for others. Mm-hmm. And not only pray for others, but we got to be in a place in prayer, a place in God that you know what, that we find ourselves uh, uh, stable and not uh, and not get outside of God, not get outside in that place where we want to go and we'll, uh, feel like, well, I know I'm in the right and you in the wrong. And we feel like, you know what, uh, we can go ahead and, and begin to confront. We got to have that spirit of humbleness. And you know what? I really just thank God. And the guy, uh, they, you know, they got out the car and he smashed the gas and 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 whipped. It was a, a car. I'm I'm one car and it was a truck on the other side of me and and he whipping and whipping around us even while we sitting there parked, uh, getting gas. And I'm sitting here like, what is going on? And you know. And, and, and one thing that's going on is the enemy, he is going to and fro throughout the earth. Mm-hmm. He's trying to see how can I take out the men and women of God? How can I take these people out? So if I can get this person to act crazy, to get to you. The, see, sometimes we got to, one thing about the enemy, he's saying, you know what? How can I take you out? How can I get to you? And, you know, I would listen to even Pastor Wiles. He said, you know what? It was a vehicle behind me that was blowing their home. And sometimes we'll react because of what's going on behind us. It's a green light. And somebody said, I need you to go. 
And sometimes, you know what? If we react on what other people are doing and we're not relying on the Holy Spirit that's giving us direction, then we'll find ourselves in a place of, of, of termination. We'll find ourselves in a place where, you know what? This is not where God had ordered. And that's how a lot of times you find that uh, people's lives are taken early because they did not hear and they did not abide to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So I really thank God for the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I, I thank God for direction. I thank God for covering. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we find ourselves, you know, even... Uh, uh, worrying about our family and worrying about our children. But even as I would listen to even Pastor Wise, even as he began to pray, we got to begin to speak. We got to speak a covering over them. We got to speak blessings over them. And see, one thing about the Holy Spirit, he'll give you the words to speak. What is it that we are allowing to come out of our mouth? What is it that we are allowing the enemy to come and begin to use us as his very own mouthpiece? But when we submit to the Holy Spirit and we let him guide us in all truth and let him guide our lips when our lips need to be moved and be spoken. Sometimes he say, you know what? I need you to bridle your tongue. Don't even say nothing. And that can be so hard for a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. But we got to be in tune to the Holy Spirit because he will guide us in all truth. Amen. With that being said, let's go to the scripture. John 14, 26 through 27. John 14, 26 through 27. The word of God says, this is Jesus speaking, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I will give you, not as the world gives, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart not let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, he gives us that guidance. He also gives us that peace and he gives us that protection. He gives us that guidance. He gives us that peace and he gives us that protection. Just the, the two testimonies for Pastor um, Harris and Pastor Wiles. He protected. He protected. Anybody else? It probably, it probably, if they wasn't, if they didn't have the Holy Spirit, they would have probably went off on the person. They probably would have started something the person, you know, you never know where their minds would have been at. The Holy Spirit protects us. You know, a lot of times we we always saying, okay, Lord, I need guidance. Ask the Holy Spirit. And that comes with total surrender. Let's go to the um, scripture, James 1 and 5. And this is talking about wisdom. You know, a lot of times we say, okay, Lord, what you need me to do? All you have to ask is for wisdom. Verse uh, five says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wind of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. When we ask God, when he wants us to guide us, we got to ask for that wisdom. We got to say, okay, Lord, where do you want me to go? And we have to ask without doubting. Now, what if I'd have been doubting, you know, what I've heard when the Holy Spirit was saying, 
take this direction. If I say, you know what, I'm just going to do this my way. I'm just going to go on it. Even though I know it's a shortcut, I'm just going to go this way. And I would have ended up in traffic. And guess what? I probably would have still been in traffic by the time my appointment. I mean, when God had told me to go this other way, I got there 15 minutes early. 15 minutes early. I left a little late from my house. And because I allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me into the direction instead of, you know, relying on technology at that time, I got there 15 minutes early and was able to talk to the right person. It's because the Holy Spirit, he, he guided me there. And a lot of times when we allow the Holy Spirit to, um, you know, to come into our lives, we must be teachable. We must be teachable. A lot of times we will say, okay, well, holy, I know I, I, I know what you're saying, but I got this. You know what? I I, I know I, I've been down that road before, like the Holy Spirit ain't, you know, don't know exactly what's gonna happen in your life. So we're like, okay, okay, Holy Spirit, you know, you have to be teachable. Sometimes, and if and if there's times that you disobey, God will allow you to learn that lesson. He will allow you to learn that lesson. Because as I'm thinking about it, what if I did go down that um that wrong path? I would have learned the lesson of, okay, maybe I need to listen to the Holy Spirit a lot more. Maybe I need to not, you know, allow my feelings to get, you know, wrapped up in a certain situation. Maybe I need to, you know, be able to control my emotions and control, you know, my feelings and stuff like that, you know, when I'm going through things. You know, I have to be teachable in this season. And that's a and that's the thing that um that a lot of believers, you know, go and we have to be teachable because we're in the season where God is going to be doing a lot of miraculous things in our life. The enemy is going to be trying to uh come at us. So we definitely have to be, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit and leading and guide us into all truth. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. But also you have to have a surrendered heart. Your heart got to be surrendered. I mean, surrendered all the way in, not just halfway in, but all the way in. Not just saying, okay, uh, Lord, I'm going to serve you on this day because I'm going to serve you when everything is going good. But, you know, I have a surrendered heart that when no matter what, during my uh, darkest times, even when it's good and even when it's bad, I still have a surrendered heart heart, yielding all control to the Holy Spirit. That reminds me of this one prayer um, that this uh, lady named Melinda had told me a while back. She said that she says this every day. She said, Holy Spirit, I yield all control to you so that God perfect uh, will in my life today is done. And I thought that that was powerful. That was so simple. I thought, he said, Holy Spirit, I yield all control to you so that God perfect uh, will in my life today is done. And that's it. And I thought, wow, that is so much power because if you break that down, you're saying, Holy Spirit, I'm yielding all control to you. That God perfect will in my life today. You know, we're so focused on, you know, stuff that's going to happen tomorrow, next week, the, you know, the next moment. What is your will for me today? What do you want for me to, what you want me to do today? What, who do you want me to help today? You know, who do you want me to talk to today? You know, even though um, uh, situations might go bad, I yield all control to you. And once you have that surrendered heart, the Holy Spirit will come in and just help you in all, you know, aspect, aspects of your life. And he will also give you that peace, that peace which surpasses all understanding. I mean, even in the times where you feel stressed out, you feel that everything is coming against you. You feel that everybody is, is coming against you. He will sit there and give you that assurance that he is with you, that he will never leave nor forsake you. That's what if you go back to the scripture in John, he said that I will give you this. I will send you this Holy Spirit from my father in my name. But at the end of it, it talks about 
My peace I will give to you, not as the world gives. The peace from the Lord is more is better than any peace that we can get from the world. You know, the peace from the world, it can it might be, you know, some money, it might be some fame, it might be, you know, material things. But once you have that peace from the Holy Spirit, that peace from God, I mean that perfect peace. That peace which surpasses all of us and just has a calmness over you. It's been times where um, my mind was rattled. It was a lot on my mind. And it was a lot of stuff that I was, you know, going through and debating. All I did was turn on some gospel music. I mean, I just started listening to the words. Um, one of my favorite songs, I listened to it this morning. It's Great Is Your Mercy by Dunn and McClurkin. It was like, great is your mercy for me. I can't even remember all the uh, lyrics right about now. It's like, great is your mercy for me. Your love and kindness for me. Uh, tender and mercy, I see. And he said, great is your grace. And I thought about his grace, his grace that woke me up this morning. Even though I had all these negative thoughts, you know, um, and going in my mind before going to sleep. But he said that I still give you grace this morning. I still I allow, I still allow you to wake up to see another day. I still give you that grace. I still give you that peace. And then he said, you know, day after day, and it says forever faithful towards me. <laughs> he said faithful. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so faithful towards us. No matter if we're in, you know, we're doing wrong. No matter even if we disobey, he still is with us. Even um, when we just sit there and we just going through all kinds of craziness, he is still faithful. He is He is faithful to, give, for, to forgive us for our sins. And then at the end of that, uh, Donald McClellan was like, great is your grace. Great is your grace. The next thing you know, I just started singing. By the time the, the choir came in, it was that peace that came, that came over me. And I just went into instant worship. Sometimes it, it takes just, you know, a word. It takes um, listening to a song. It takes, you know, um, maybe looking at a video or something. It takes, God will send a person God will have a person send a scripture to you, a prayer in the morning. And you just thought, man, I was really going through. But that prayer that you sent me, it helped me. That's that person being used by the Holy Spirit to help each and er another, help another person out when they're uh, going through. The Holy Spirit. That's all I, all I can really just say is Holy Spirit. I yield all control to you so that God perfect will in my life today is done. Father God, I just thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. I just thank you, Lord God. I just thank you. Holy Spirit, just thank you, Lord God. For your Holy Spirit that is so loving and kind kindness to us, that's protecting us. I just thank you. And I ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let me give it back into the hands of a uh, pastor.